Sorry. Okay. On Wednesday, February 14, 2018, were you in school? I was in school. Okay. Do uh, you remember where you were during fourth period? Yes, I was in band in, in my band, band class. Yes. Okay. And where's band? Band is in the main building. Okay. Let me show you. Everybody can see this. I'm going to show you uh, Ms. Baez, uh, States Exhibit Number One. And can, can you see that? Okay. Um, On the yes. Screen? Now you I can. can. Now I can. Okay. If you can wait a minute, uh, did, does this States Exhibit One does it accurately, true, truly depict? where the band room was, where you were? Yes, it does. Okay, so what's going to come up is a, a place where you can, you know, kind of mark it for okay. us, okay? That's fine. Right. Is it is it showing on your... It's not, it's not a, mm -hmm. There's a row of colors that's going to come up at the bottom, oh, okay. but they're not coming out up yet. Oh, no, no, there, there you go. Really Here, right there. Okay, all right. So that's where you were, and... Uh, what happened during that fourth period? During that fourth period, um, towards the end of the day, I decided that I had to go to the restroom. And um, unfortunately, we weren't able to use the restrooms in that building at that time. So yeah. I had a choice in going to the freshman building to the okay. right or to the cafeteria building, um, which was farther. So I ended up going to the freshman building. Okay. Uh, had you been, did you ever have any classes in the fresh, freshman building? Yes, I've had. All right, so you knew, you know, the freshman building yeah. where the bathroom restrooms were, the bathrooms, right? Yeah, I knew the layout. Okay, so uh, how did you how did you get there? You can maybe just trace it for us. Trace us. So I exited the building where I drew the X, and then I just walked this way directly into and the right building. In. Okay, so uh, when you walk in the east doors, tell us what what happened, if anything. Um, as soon as I walked in, um, what's it called? I was headed straight to the bathroom. I realized there was obviously two people behind me. Um, I don't know where they ended up going, but um, I directly went to the bathroom. Um, I saw someone in front of me in the stairwell, um, someone higher up, an administrator or security, who looked freaked out. So I turned around because I saw him run up the stairs. And then as I turned around, I saw um, the shooter um, coming out of the stairwell, and then I immediately turned back around, and that's when the firing started, and that's when I ran to the bathroom to my right side, but unfortunately it was locked, so I ran directly to the left side. Um, luckily there was a classroom unlocked, and I made my way in there. Okay, so um, were you injured in any way? Yes. Um, while I was in the hallway, um, I didn't realize at that moment, but I had been injured in the leg. Okay. And uh, what kind of injury did you have in the leg? I had a bullet wound enter my right leg and then explode on my left side. Okay. So it went in one leg and then went into the other leg. Is that right? Correct. Okay. I'm going to show you now uh, states exhibits. Uh, States Exhibit 1. I've showed this in the transcript. Okay. Uh, States Exhibit 2D, 2E, and 2F. First, let me show you um, 2D. Do you recognize who that is? Yes. Who is that? That's me. Okay. And I'm going to show you uh, 2E and 2F. So, does 2E and 2F show? I know there's a bandage on one. But yeah. Show where one in one leg and hit the other leg? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer 2A, 2E, 2D, and 2F. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. Just briefly.
Friends' objection states exhibit 2. D for identification will be received as states 49. States exhibit 2E for identification will be received as states 50. And states 2F will be received as states 51. I'm going to put this up on the screen for Baez and let's see here. Who is that? That's me. Okay, and is that you? Where are you when this picture was taken? In the hospital. Okay. Uh, how many surgeries did you have? I ended up having four surgeries. Okay. And here's uh, State's Exhibit. Uh, 51, that, I'm sorry for the record, was States Exhibit 49. This is States Exhibit 51. Pardon? Yeah. Okay, thank you. This, what, what does that show? This shows the um, injury to my left thigh. Okay. And show you now states exhibit number 50. What's that show? That shows where the bullet entered on my right side. On your other leg, right? On my other leg, okay. yes. So um, I want to show you uh, a video clip and see if you can identify you in the clip, okay? Sounds good. Your Honor, Play the video. Okay. Is there video in evidence, Mr. Sachs? It's in evidence. It's on the S19. It's in evidence, and you want to need a sidebar? Yes, ma'am.
Hey, sorry about that. You all are going to have that white noise when you're asleep and be dreaming of the, the white noise. Uh, we do that, so I think I told you this before, we use those headphones as opposed to taking the jury out every time we have to discuss something that doesn't involve the jurors. It's, it would be a much more inconvenient process to you all, at least we think, to have to go all the way back to the jury room and then come all the way back in. So um, we do the white noise and, and the headphones for that reason. Okay, at this time, I'm going to overrule the defense objection to publishing the video, and Mr. Sachs, you may publish the video at this time. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Is that you, Ms. Baez, walking there? That is me. That's you, right? Yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, we're going to pause it here. Okay. Any, any, you guys want to call us or anything? Questions? Okay. Ms. Byatt, thank you. You're excused. Thank you. that you have just begun watching, but we excuse the witness so that she would not have to watch herself uh, being injured. But it is part of the same video. Mr. Sachs, whenever you're ready. Thank you.
Thank you. My name is Genesis Valentin. Last name is spelled V-A-L-E-N-T-I-N. Good morning, Ms. Valentin. How are good. you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Do uh, you go to school? Mm -hmm. I go, go to, to Palm Beach State. Okay. Um, did you go to high school? Where did you go to high school? Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. And what year did you graduate? Uh, 2020. And uh, like to call you, did you go all four years to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas? No, just my first two. Okay. So on Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018, were you attending Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School? <clears throat> Correct. And Ms. Valentin, I'd like to call your attention to fourth period on uh, Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember where you were during fourth period? Yes. Where were you? In Mrs. Haas class, room 1216. Okay. And did something happen uh, during that period? Yes. Could you please tell us what happened? Um, around 1230, maybe 1235. Sorry, not 12. 235, I remember hearing some shots outside the room. <coughs> okay. Hey, did you recognize any shots? Um, no, at first I thought it was just balloons because everybody had balloons because it was Valentine's Day. Okay, so what happened? Um, after we heard about three shots, we were all like, this is not normal, so we started to hide. Okay. And then after we hid, we heard more. Okay. So that's when we knew this was serious. Okay, so what happened then? At that point, we were all just hiding, trying to make sure we were all covered. And we just kept hearing shots, so we knew that it was not balloons. We knew it was something more serious, and then we heard screaming, so... We knew this was getting bad. Okay, and then what happened? After that, we just stayed covered as long as we could. Some classmates called police officers. They all knew what was going on. They were already on their way. So they just told us to stay hidden as long as we could. Okay, and uh, were you injured at all? Yes. And how did you get injured? Um, I got some shrapnel all over my left leg and a little bit on my right. And where were you when you, do you remember where you were when you got shot in the classroom? Um... Yes, it was right next to the teacher's desk. Okay. And uh, did you uh, see anyone else get wounded or shot? Yes. Who did you see get shot? Um, two girls next to me, Elena and Alyssa. Uh, Elena Petty and mm -hmm. Alyssa Alphadeff? Correct. Okay. Uh, so um, what happened when they got shot? Um, Alyssa got shot in her stomach and Elena was shot in her knee. They were both instantly gone after being wounded. Okay. Uh, did you see anyone else get wounded? Um, not right away, but after we were escorted, I saw another kid, Alex, I believe was his name. Okay. Alex Schachter? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, when the, did you see the shots coming in? No, I was hidden. Oh, you were, you were hiding? Yes, correct. Okay. And you remember, 
the best I know you can't remember exactly, but the, the best you can guess how many shots <coughs> went into twelve sixteen, if you can recall. Um not sure. I'm pretty sure it's more than three. Okay. All right. Uh, let me show you now. Uh, I showed these to the defense room. Stacey exhibit. Um, Ms. Valentin, uh, 24A, um, 23Z, and 23Y. Do you recognize mm -hmm. that? What, what are they? What, all three photographs, what do they show? These are my shrapnels on my left and right leg. Okay, and that was... That was taken when you were in the facility to get treated? Mm -hmm. Okay. And they, did they truly and accurately depict your wounds as they existed? Yes. On Wednesday, February 14, 2018? Yes. Okay. All right, Your Honor, I'd like to introduce these. And I'll have no further questions. Thank you, Ms. Valentine. All right. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am, please. Thank you. Objection. States 23Y for identification will be received as states 52. States 23Z for identification will be received as states 53. And states 24A will be received as states 54. Your Honor, I have no further question, Ms. Valentin. Could she be excused? Sure. Uh, Do you have any questions? No, ma'am. Okay, Ms. You're excused. Thank you. Thank you. May I publish these, Your Honor? You may. Publishing States Exhibit 54 that Ms. Valentin has identified. And States Exhibit 52 that Ms. Valentin has identified. And States Exhibit 53 that Ms. Valentin has identified. Ivy Seamus, please.
morning. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You can put your hand down and please be seated. <coughs> Please uh, speak into the microphone and state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Sure. My name is Ivy Seamus. It's S-C-H-A-M-I-S. Okay. And Ms. Seamus, uh, thank you. Ms. Seamus, uh, uh, are you employed? Yes. What do, you, what do you do for a living? Well, for about 20 years, I was a social studies educator at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. But I am currently an office administrator at Milton Gottesman Jewish Day School of the nation's capital. Okay. Um, and you were at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas from what years? From 2001, um, and I was employed until 20, the beginning of 2020. Was that Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, was that your first teaching assignment? No. I taught a couple of years in Dade County and then took a break to raise my children and then started up again at, at, at Broward. Okay, and um, I'd like to call your attention to February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that date? I do. Okay, and where were you, te where were you teaching at that time? I know you were teaching at Marjorie Stone Douglas, but where in the campus? Yes, I was in room 1214 on the first floor. Okay, and how long had you been in that classroom, as, as assigned that classroom? Yes, that, that classroom was my classroom since the building was erected in 2009. So I was the only teacher in room 1214 the entire time. Okay, and what were you teaching? I was, I was a social studies teacher. Um, that day I taught international relations, academic elective, and history of the Holocaust, another academic elective. Okay, and 1214... Um, who, the class next to you is, is classroom 1215? Yes, I think so. Well, let me show you. I don't remember the classroom numbers. States Exhibit Mark uh, 7. Okay. Can you see that? Not yet. Okay, yes, I can see it. Okay, and there's going to be something coming up in a minute, and you can circle 1214. The colors on the bottom of the screen. Okay, and obviously 1215 is uh, the adjoining classroom, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And is there a part, little partition between your classroom and classroom 1215? There's an alcove. Okay. And but there's a wall between the both classrooms. Uh, I'm talking outside. The outside, door. yes. Okay. And the doors, were they open in or out? The classroom door opens in, um, out. It opens out. <laughs> you can you remember, sure? it opens okay. out. Okay. All right, it opens out. And when you go outside of uh, your classroom 1214, uh, is there a little wall between? Yes. Okay. How big is the wall? <clears throat> oh, goodness. A few feet. Okay. All right. Uh, and who had the classroom next door to you in 1215? Julie Matlock. Okay. So on February the 14th, 2018, fourth period. Please tell us what occurred. Um, February 14, 2018, fourth period, was my history of the Holocaust class. It was an academic elective for juniors and seniors. Um, it started out great. It was a happy day because it was Valentine's Day and the kids were bringing in candy and stuffed animals and um, flowers and it, I had planned a lesson that day to cover the 1936 Olympics because mm -hmm. the 2018 Olympics in Pyeongchang were happening at the same time. And um, the it's a 90-minute class, and the students started out, they completed an activity we had done the class before, 
and we were actually talking about hate on college campuses. And um, then the students had laptops on their desk. We were watching testimony <coughs> from Eyewitness. It's a program online from through the Shoah Foundation. And um, the students were doing that activity and watching testimony. And when they completed it, there was about maybe 20, 25 minutes left of class. So I wanted to start the next, the next lesson. And we were going to talk about the Jesse Owens story. That's what we were doing. We were going to talk about the Jesse Owens story. And I had put up on the Record X, which is a large screen, um, sort of like a TV screen, but you can write on it a, an interactive whiteboard. And I put on there key characters from the Jesse Owens story. And I asked the students, um, it was sort of a discussion about who they might have already known and what they knew about Jesse Owens. And I asked the students um, if they knew who Adi Dossler was, because he was up on the board and, and most students got a kick out of that because it sounded familiar. And Nicholas Dwaret in my class raised his hand and he got excited and he said, I know who Adi Dossler is. He was the German shoemaker, who he owned a shoe factory, who started the Adidas company. And he was up there because his, he made the shoes, for, the track shoes that Jesse Owens wore when he won his four gold medals. Um, and the class was super excited because he knew the answer and we were so happy for him. And then he also stated that Rudy Dossler was his brother who, was the, who started the Puma shoe factory. And, and we were not so, totally surprised because Nick was an athlete and he knew these things. And it was at that very moment um, when he had that aha moment that he, that he knew the answer to that, we heard very loud shots going off in the hallway right outside the classroom door. Okay, and then what happened? And um, so it was just for maybe a second, the students just, you know, it was almost like we stopped in our tracks and they flew out of their seats and tried to find cover. I mean, in my mind, it was unmistakable that that was gunshots. Um, again, I obviously didn't know, but they, so the students flew out of their seats trying to find cover in a very small room that had a window, a wall full of windows. There was a front door with a, a large window, to me it was large, going down the center. Um, that was not bulletproof. Um, they, there was a lot of furniture in the classroom, and there were a lot of students in that classroom. So How many the, students were in your classroom? There were, I believe, 30 that day. Okay. There were a few absent. Um, but it's a small room to have you know, many students. I had about, I want to say, 35 or 37 desks in there, something like that, because I'm, some of my other electives were larger. And... Um, and they tried to find cover wherever they could. We didn't have much time, but they scrambled to different parts of the room, sort of along the perimeter, and some tried to get behind the laptop card, and some tried to get behind a, a, a file cabinet and the Recordex board. Um, Hannah and Shannon went under the, the, the well of the teacher desk. Um, so I stood there for a second while they all tried to get cover. Uh, we had never had a drill or anything to tell us what to do or where to go. But um, a young lady named Kelly Plore looked up and she called me over. So I, um, I ran to her. She said that she was thinking of her mom and what her mom would do in this situation. So we, we all were sort of down on the ground. We were on the, on the floor trying to hide behind whatever we could. Um, and it was really seconds later that the barrel of that AR-15 just ambushed our classroom. It came right through that glass door, uh, the glass panel in the door, excuse me, and was just sh sh shooting everywhere. It was extremely loud. It was very frightening. Um, and I kept thinking about these kids that should not be experiencing this at all. Okay, and did you see anyone uh, wounded? I did not see, we were all close to the ground, like laying on the ground. I did not see any 
anything at that time, okay. no. All right, so what happened next? So from where I was uh, laying on the floor with Kelly, I could see the handle of the door. The door was locked, but it really wouldn't have mattered because whoever was out there, shooter or shooters, which we didn't know at the time, could have easily put their hand through the panel of the door and, and open the door. And then I thought, well, that, that, that was it. Um, and uh, it, it, it didn't happen because um, just as I was thinking what to do, as the only adult in that classroom there, the, I heard the shooting across the hall. Okay. And how, uh, how long did you hear the, the shooting? You heard it down the hall? Did you hear it anywhere else? Um, yes. And, and at some point, a fire alarm went off, so it was hard to hear everything um, that, was, that was going on. We heard, it, we heard it down the hall, and then we heard it further. We heard it further, but nobody moved. Nobody moved because, and again, I found out later, I think, from some of the whatever they, that they, he did come back. We were worried that whoever it was, um, that the killer or shooter would come back. And, and so, um, and the students were quite mature. I was unbelievably proud, and they were incredibly brave. Just, shh, they, shh, shh. No one said anything. Very, very quiet. Um, just worried that that was going to happen again. All right. Did you hear anything above you? I, I might have. I mean, on the second floor. Or anywhere. I, I, we, you know? we might have heard, but then again, the fire alarm at one point went on, so it it, did, it muffled sounds of 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 the sh shooting. Okay. And how long did you wait before there was a police response? So, like I said, we were very very quiet. I think students were on their phone trying to get service or, or texting their loved ones or their boyfriend or girlfriend. So maybe between 15 and 20 minutes we waited for someone to come rescue us. But um, the young lady, Kelly, who was next to me, was able to get a bar of service. So she said, um, I heard her saying to 911, 12, 14. So I thought they would come soon because they knew what room we were in. Okay. And uh, when the police came, did you see anyone who was injured? So when the police came, um, they, they were screaming. SWAT was screaming in the hallway and got into the classroom door the same way that I thought anyone else would get in. They just stuck their hand through that, through that glass panel um, and told us to put our hands up and was screaming um, who, for the injured. So that's when I saw the four students that were injured in my class. And, and who did you see injured? Um, Daniel Meniscal and um, Isabel Checker, Samantha Grady, and then Samantha Fuentes. Okay. And uh, was there anyone who uh, that you saw that wasn't wounded, who wasn't moving? I didn't because they told us, don't look, they were screaming at us, screaming, because uh, they said they didn't find the shooter, and so they could have been anywhere, so they were screaming at us to put our hands up and not to look down and, and to run out. Okay. All right, let me show you now State's Exhibit marked 3S for identification. You know who that is? That's my girl, Helena. What's her full name? It's Helena Ramsey. And three are? And that's Nicholas Dwaret, handsome boy. Uh, at this time, Your Honor, I'd like to offer state's exhibits 3S and 3R. No objection. State's 3R for identification will be received as state's 54. I'm sorry, 55. And states 3S, as in Sam, for identification, will be received as states 56. Your Honor, I have no further questions of Ms. Seamus. Is it any questions? No, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. You're excused. Thank you. May I, as soon as she leaves, may I follow?
55, that states in Exhibit 55, machine misidentified that as Nicholas Gorett. States Exhibit 56, machine misidentified that as Helena Rames. We are on a 15 minute recess. It's 10.30. We'll be back in session at uh, 10.45. <coughs>
the morning so that I'll know when to... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like six. Okay, I'll, what I'll do is I'll just let you tell me when you're ready to okay. take the break in case. <coughs> Are present. Everyone else may be seated. State, go ahead and call your next witness. Thank you. Your full name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Joletta Matlock, M A T L O C K. Good morning, Ms. Matlock. How Good morning. Are you? Uh, what do you do for a living? I teach at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Okay. How long have you been a teacher? I have been a teacher since 2005. And how long have you been a teacher at, at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas? This, I think I'm going into my 12th year. Okay. Um, I'd like to call your attention to. February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that date? I do. Okay. Uh, where, where were you located physically as a teacher on that date? I was in room 1215. How long were you assigned uh, classroom 1215? I had been in room 1215 probably the last 
five or six years. I was current. Before that, I was on the third floor in room 1257. Okay. Do you remember who was in classroom, what teacher was in classroom 1214? Ms. Shamuth. Okay. And she was right next to you, right? Correct. Have any, do you remember who was in your classroom in 1218 on the other side of you? Miss uh, Sinich. <laughs> Brittany Sinich? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so let me take you to the fourth period um, on February the 14th, 2018, okay? Yeah. So tell us what you remember happening, please. Well, it was fourth period, of course. It was Valentine's Day. That I had personalization, which is study hall. Um, I had a big group, and I would often... When you say a big group, how many students would you say? Um, normally it would be 24 to 25. I think if I'm not mistaken, I had 28, 29. And then um, I would also have students coming from other personalization classes into my class to share time with me or help me grade papers with the permission of other teachers. Um, that group was very um, friendly with each other. It became like a, they had their own little family amongst themselves, if you want to say, um, sharing snacks, talking, um, grading papers with me. And on that particular day, there was like 12 of them, 12 students around my desk that day, one student behind me, um, somewhere out on passes. Um, but um, it was a group, like I said, that it was very friendly with each other. Um, and they would do their work and laugh. And it's just a good group of kids. Okay. So what happened? Um, we were, um, kids were working together. Like I said, I had kids around my desk, like 12 kids around my desk. Um, some were out. Um, it was, uh, my desk, when you walk into my classroom, um, you go to the left and there's a little small space and then there's a closet or a cabinet if you want to call it. And then my desk was caddy corner to where there's like a built-in desk in the back where there's a printer and everything. So my desk was caddy corner to the door. You couldn't see the door from where my desk was. Um, so it was almost at the end of the day and um, well, your inner- Before you continue, since I- Yes. Let me show you Stacey's exhibit three Y. And ask you if you can identify that. That's my classroom. Is that your class? Does that accurately depict your classroom as it existed on February the 14th, 2018? Mm -hmm. Does it accurately depict where your desk was and where the door is? Yes. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer uh, State's Exhibit 3Y, please. Is there any objection? No objection, 3Y. State's Exhibit 3Y for identification will be received as stated. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Matlock, I want to show you Stacy uh, Exhibit 57. Uh, all right, can you can you see that? Okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Um, there's a, something will come up that you can uh, tell us straighter. Um, see the colors? Yes. Okay. So, um, can you put uh, an X where your desk was? Okay, and obviously the door. Do you want to put an X on the door? Yeah, you can put an X on the door. That's okay. And that that's the window in the door, right? Correct. Okay. All right, so uh, go ahead. Tell, tell us what happened. Uh, so it was towards the end of the day, and um, I heard um, like three loud bangs, um, and I used I stood up and I don't even remember part of saying to get down, but I was told by students, I said, how did you know to, to just run so quickly to my side of the room? And they said, I told them to do that. But part of my memory doesn't even remember. I know I said, you know, to get down, but part of me doesn't remember saying all that I said. Okay. Um, so they um, got down. I, I stood up, pushed my chair back, and the students got up underneath my desk and all the way the, as far as they could in the corner and up against the where the closet was towards the desk. And then I walked to that little piece of the wall that was by the closet, in between the closet and the door, and I stood there by that door. Um, thinking that it was the drill that they had told us that we would be having since we had a, a training um, 
in the auditorium in January, and they said there would be a drill forthcoming of an active shooter um, or a code red, some type of code red drill. Okay. Um, I thought it was that drill. I said, this is it. They're trying to catch us off guard. And what day then Valentine's Day? So I stood by the door in that little piece of space that was there and the kids were, were nervous of course and I was telling them to be calm that it's okay it's just a drill um that it's it's going to all be fine um and then the, the 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 sounds just kept coming and kept coming and I I moved towards the front of the door and when I was in front of the door the glass fell out on my feet and all I could think of and I didn't have a phone with me I always when kept my say, when you say the glass fell out you talking about the glass in the door yeah the okay. glass in the door I was standing in front of that door when the glass fell in front of my on my feet um, and I, I remember I walked I walked towards the student's desk, and I was still in front of the door. I walked in front of the student's desk, and I looked at the students hiding behind my desk and in that corner, and I told them, I still said, I said, oh boy, now this is really bad. Whoever is conducting this drill, somebody could have gotten hurt through the glass. Um, I, and then I walked back towards the students, and I told them, it's okay, just relax. I kept thinking that it was a drill. Okay, then what happened? And then after that, um, I, I went, there was a student that was standing next to me that he didn't want to leave my side, and he was there for the whole entire moment until SWAT came in, but um, he didn't want to leave my side. Um, I started, when I was standing in that little piece by the door, looking out at the windows because um, my windows were towards the seven, like the seven hundred building. So I was in looking other words, out. Your, the windows you're talking about in the. They're in like the on quest, the south side. Looking south. Okay. Yes. So they're looking south. So I was looking out through the windows, um, and I don't know where, like, if the adrenaline or what it was. I was looking, and I remember on top of the window there was um, like a blue light on top of the window, and then my senses started coming in, and I started smelling like when you light a match, like the smell of, I guess it's sulfur, um, you, I started smelling that. Um, and then I looked at a student desk and I, and I saw like some debris and I thought, well, that's, um, that's weird that that would be there like that. Um, and then, um, I kept addressing the kids that it would be okay, that it's a drill, and it kept coming in and out of my mind. Is it a drill? Is it not a drill? Is it a drill? Is it not a drill? And then I stayed with the kids until, um, what seemed like forever, and you could hear um, what were gunshots, but we thought it How was... How many gunshots did you hear? Oh, there was a lot. I couldn't even tell you. I, uh, from I don't know. Your, your classroom, were you able to tell where they were coming from? They were coming from the hallway and from the door next, from the room next to me. Okay. And then we heard screaming next door. Okay. And um, did those gunshots dissipate? Did you ever hear them above you? They were, you could still hear things, but it was a little less that you couldn't hear them as loud. Okay. So prior to this happening, did anyone ask permission to leave your classroom? They did. Okay. Who asked permission to leave your classroom? Martin and Luke. Oh, Luke Martin Martin and Luke. Is it Martin, Martin? Duque and Luke Hoyer asked to go out on a pass to the media center. Okay. And um, where is the media center? The media okay. center is over by the main 100 building. Okay. It's in the 200 building, but it's on okay. the Okay. Did the you other give side. them a pass? I did. Okay. And did they leave? They did. Okay. Let me show you space exhibit mark 24B for identification. And ask you, can you identify who's in that photograph? I can. Who, who's in that photograph? In the black hoodie, it's Lou Corrier, and in the red um, sweater, it's Martin Duque. Okay. Right. And you know where they are in this photograph? They're walking, it looks like they're walking out by the drama building, um, out, coming this way towards the 1200 building. Away from the media center? Correct. Okay. Uh, public, oh, Your Honor, I'd like to introduce uh, 24B. Is there any objection? No objection. States Exhibit 24B for identification will be received without objection as States 58.
okay. Uh, could you just uh, describe, you said the one uh, in the kind of red is? Martin. Martin Duque, Aquiano. Yes. And the, uh, the gentleman, the boy in the black is? Lou Corner. Okay. All right, so did anyone else leave your class? Yes. Anna Martin, Sophia Delia went up to the second floor to Miss Bergens to take a test. Um, uh, Gina Montato asked to go to the little alcove that was in front of my room to do some kind of project that she had that she said she had to speak into the, it was a speaking part portion of it that she wanted to speak into her her laptop into her computer. I asked her if she wanted to go to the media center. She did not. I asked her if she wanted to go to a different teacher's room. She did not. She wanted to sit right there by the classroom, and when she was done, she would come back inside. Okay. And uh, I also what? had I also had Charles Cahill, who had gone to the media center but had come back. Okay. Um, when uh, Gina left to work on her computer outside your classroom, um, remember how long before the shooting started that did, did she ask permission to do that? It was probably about 1.30, 1.40. Okay, okay. Let me show you now. State's Exhibit uh, Mark 3T for identification. Miss Matlock, and I suppose you can identify what that depicts. Okay, so that's my room. And is that uh, your room in 1214? Yes. Okay. And does that photograph truly and accurately depict the doorways, uh, how they existed on February the 14th, 2018? Yes. And there's a part, little partition between your two classrooms, right? Yes. And that's accurately depicted in that's, this photograph? Yes, that's okay. the little alcoves. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer statements in the T.
Okay, over the defense objection, states exhibit 3T for identification will be received as states 59. Now it states 59. I want to show you that. And can you see that okay? I can. All right, and that shows your classroom uh, at 1215 and Ms. Shamus' classroom 1214, right? It does. And that's the little partition I'm talking about in between. Is that correct? You are. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, now I want to show you um, State's Exhibit. Mark uh, first 3X. 3X, you know who that is? Yes. Who is that? Martin Duque. Martin Duque Aquiano? Yes. And 3W? Who is that? Gina Montato. And 3V? Luke Hoyer. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to introduce uh, Stacey Exhibit 3V, 3W. Is there any objection? No, no. Thank you. It's states three V as in Victor. For identification will be received as states. 60 states 3w will be received as states 61 and states 3x for identification will be received as states 62. Your Honor, I have no further questions of Ms. Matlock. Uh, do you have any questions? I am not. Then may I publish the photos after she leaves me? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. States Exhibit 62, Martin Duque, Aquiana. States Exhibit 61, Gina Montalvo. And States Exhibit 60.
name if I make a big thing. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. You can go ahead and have a seat. If you would, please uh, lean in and speak into the microphone and state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Sophia Delia, D E L I A. Whenever you're ready. Thank you, Ron. Uh, good morning, Ms. Delia. How are you? Okay. Good. Uh, do you go to school? I do. Where do you go to school? I'm going to be a transfer student at the University of Tennessee. Okay. And uh, do you go to high school somewhere here in Broward yeah. County? Yes. Where did you go to high school? Marjorie Stillman Douglas High School. And when did you graduate? 2021. I'd like to call your attention to February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that date? I do. Okay. Fourth period. Do you remember where you are? Yes, I was in personalization with Ms. Matlock, room 1215. Okay. Um, tell us what happened uh, during fourth period, please. Um, I walked into the class, and then shortly after, I had to go upstairs to the second floor um, with Ms. Bergen to make up a test that I had missed previously. Um, I went with my friend Anna. She had also missed the test. Is that Anna Martins? Yes. Okay. Um, after we finished the test, we walked to the second floor bathroom because I was the only one unlocked. Um, and we got stopped by a staff member who asked for our hall pass. Okay. Um, and we showed it to him, it was fine. We went back down the opposite stairs, um, walked back to our class and um, knocked on the door. And as we were waiting, we made small talk with Gina. Okay, where was Gina? You talked about Gina Montalto? Yes. And was she in your class in 1215 too? She was, but she was outside working on her computer. Okay, and you, you spoke to her? Um, we made small talk. Hey. Okay, what, 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 what position was she in? Um, she was sitting down. I think maybe her legs were outstretched and she was working on her laptop. Okay, and that was where in, 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 where in reference to 1215's door? Um, I believe there's a little indent in the door and she was sitting in that indent. By okay. the door. Okay. And you had small talk with Gina, and then what happened? Um, and then we got let in the door. Um, we took our seats, which were the closest ones to the door. I was in front of Anna, and she was right behind me. Um, I noticed that Luke and Martin weren't in the class anymore. When you say Luke, are uh, you talking about Luke Coyer? Yes. And Martin Duque Equiana? They yes. weren't in the class? Okay. Um, I just assumed they had to go make something up. Um, a few minutes later, there was a knock on the door, um, and Anna went to go open the door. And um, right before she was able to do that, the gunshots started. And um, I don't remember, but I was sitting at my desk, and then I was underneath my teacher's desk. So I ran over there, the whole class ran over there, and we all hid. Um, and then the gunshots kept going, the fire alarm, uh, went off. Um, it just it kept going. It, it got a little bit distant, but it was still very, very loud. Um, and then law enforcement came into the room, uh, told us they were clearing our room, uh, not to look around, that they didn't want us to see what was in the hallways. So I was looking down at the ground, um, and I stepped on class. And then when I got out the door of my classroom, that's when I saw the blood everywhere and two bodies. And then we ran out of the building. Okay. And when Anna was going to answer the knock at the door, did you get a chance to see who was at the door? No, I did not. But I later found out that it was Luke and Martin at the door. Okay. okay. Um, do you remember how close she got to the door? Um... I believe fairly close, okay. but there just wasn't enough time. Okay. And did you did you go to the same place where Anna went to? You know, after you heard the shots. Yeah, we were. The whole class was um, by our teacher's okay. desk. All right. Thank you, Sophia. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Do you have any questions? No. All right. Thank you, Mr. Excuse. Thank you. Whenever 
Riet, Ronette Riozzi. Good morning. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You can go ahead and be seated. And if you would please speak into the microphone and state your full name and spell your last name for the record. My name is Ronit Riovin, R O N I T R E O V E N. Would you, um, excuse me one second, would you spell your first name as well, please? R O N I T. Thank you. You may inquire. Uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Riovin. How are you? Good. What, what do you do for a living? I'm a high school teacher. Okay. And how long have you been a teacher? Going on 23 years. And uh, where do you teach now? Stoneman Douglas High School. How long have you taught at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School? Uh, this will be my 23rd year. And what do you teach? I teach AP Psychology and Honors Geography. What's AP stand for? Advanced Placement. Okay. I'd like to call your attention uh, to Wednesday. February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that day? I do. Okay. I'd like to call your attention to fourth period. Where were you? I was uh, in the classroom teaching my class. And what, what classroom were you in? That would be uh, room 1213. Okay. And uh, how long were you assigned to classroom 1213? Oh, since it's, since the building's inception, which... Uh, I believe was 2009. Okay. I'm going to show you a stake exhibit uh, marked uh, number three. And uh, there's a little thing that's going to come up, and you can just circle to uh, 1213 and where your desk was, please. Okay. And how about your desk? Where was your desk? Right there. <coughs> All right, great. All right, thank you. And so it's it's fourth period, right? Yes. Okay. What happened? Uh, so we begin class like any other class. Um, we go over a couple things as far as what we're going to be talking about. I get the class started with the lesson. Um, it's a lecture-based course, so it's mostly uh, me. Uh, in front of the class, going over things, explaining things. I have things up on the board. We have demonstrations. I'm going through the lesson with them. Students are sitting and taking notes, um, asking questions when needed. And um, we go through the period as normal. Um, I tend to kind of look at my notes and the clock every now and then to just gauge where I'm at with the lesson and the time. And I remember uh, a little later into the period, I glanced up at the clock to see the time and how much more um, I wanted to cover and to think about where I felt was a good stopping point for that day. And it was uh, 2.15. And um, I walked uh, over to the podium to see, you know, how far along I wanted to, to go in the notes. And um, I went back in front of the class and I continued to, you know, finish up with some other um, topics that we were talking about, which was a lesson on Sigmund Freud's uh, theory of personality. And then 
moments later, you hear the gunshots. And um, there were multiple gunshots. And uh, they were incredibly loud. Um, boom, 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 boom. And uh, I froze for a moment, and the students jumped out of their seats. Um, of course, they were startled and um, scared, and they tried to scurry out of their desks, and they started to run in the opposite direction of the classroom door. Um, and in running in that direction, they were running towards the windows on the other side of the classroom, and I yelled at them. I said, no, no, not that way, not that way. Go to the other side, go to the other side. Get behind the desk, get behind the furniture, go to the other way. So they went from one direction of running towards the windows, which I guess they did out of instinct. You run away from where there's danger. You run away from where you're, you know, you hear something scary. So they ran that way towards the windows, and I yelled at them to run the opposite direction. So they you know, hurried themselves off to the other side and jumped over the desks and uh, my desk and around the podium and tried to get as close as they can behind my desk and whatever furniture I had by that opposite wall of the windows, which is the wall that is on the same, which is the wall where the um, classroom door, the side of the classroom door. And in away doing from, that, they away. would be out of the line of vision. Okay. Away from the door. Away. Right. They'd be on the side of the door, but away from where they would be seen. We had a glass panel. In the door. Yes, there was a glass panel or glass window in the door. So if they were to be on the opposite side of the room, they'd be in clear vision. So I had them all run to the opposite side and hide okay. Okay. as best as they could on the, uh, that wall. And then what happened? And then um, the gunshots continued. And they got louder and louder. We were trying to keep each other quiet. Uh, the kids were on top of each other and hugging each other and holding each other. And we were trying to hush each other shh, and calm. You know, there was some whimpering and try to calm them down and keep each other quiet and calm as best as we could. And the shots got louder and louder. And uh, then... You hear the piercing sounds. You hear the piercing sounds of the fire alarm going off, and you feel you feel the vibrations in your chest as the gunshots were getting closer and louder. You could feel the vibrations in your chest and in your body. And uh, dust and debris fell from the ceilings, from the vibrations of the gunshots. It was like s extremely loud, like in a tunnel because of the hallway. And then they got to the point where they were loud because the, got, the bullets had just shot through the glass of the door. And then what did you do? We just kept hushing each other and holding each other and keeping each other quiet and calm. And did you hear, uh, did the sound seem to dissipate or what happened to the gunshots? After a little bit of time, the gunshots started to get a little more faint. They seemed to be in the distance. And do you know where they were coming from, or did you have any idea where they were coming from? I didn't know exactly where they were coming from, but I knew it was in the hallway. I didn't okay. know exactly where, but it was in the hallway. Okay. So they started, the, the, the gunshots sounded more distant, more faint, and um, when I noticed that it seemed a little further away, that's when I got up and I kind of peeked over my desk, around my desk, to see, you know, what had happened and kind of assess the situation because at that point I started to hear, um, you know, the whimpering 
and the moans and groans from the kids that were shot. And were kids shot in your room? Yes. Who was shot in your room? Uh, ben Wakander, Samantha Mayer, Madeline Wilford, and Carmen Shentro. Okay. And uh, so what, what, what else did you do? Did you, you, when you got up from your desk, Ms. Riogan, did you do anything? When I first got up, when the gunshots were a little further away, I, um, I took my keys and uh, I went over to the door and I felt it was a safe time, so I carefully uh, opened the door just a little bit with my left hand and took the key in my right hand and kind of worked my little arm around to just unlock the door and closed the door, went back to where the kids were all huddled and hiding, dropped the keys down and looked again to see the kids and it was confirmed to me that the moans and the groans and the crying were from the kids that were shot, and um, at that point, I had um, I knew that I had to try to do something to help the kids that were injured. So okay, and did you? I did. Who did you help? Um, well, initially, Ben Wakander was crying and begging for water. Please, please, I need water. Please, give me water. Uh, so I had my water bottle on my desk and I gave him the rest of my water to drink from, the water bottle, he, he drank whatever was in there. And then um, I had another student that was beside me, Logan Mitchell, who was um, pretty much next to me the, the entire time. Um, and he was beside me and helping me, kind of guiding me through, giving me that extra, yeah, it's okay to do, yeah, it's safe, da da da, I don't hear anything. He was kind of listening and also checking. And uh, I had a baby blanket that um, I used to cover uh, my coffee maker. I had a mini Keurig in the corner. So whenever I wasn't using the Keurig, I had a baby blanket that I covered it with when it wasn't in use. So I had a student that was hiding next to the Keurig throw the baby blanket over to me, and I used that baby blanket to make a tourniquet for Ben's arm. Okay. because he was bleeding out, so I just made a makeshift tourniquet and I put it on his arm, made it on his arm. And then um, Logan was um, looking over Maddie, Madeline. Madeline and, Wilford. And I believe he got a denim jacket from another student and covered Maddie with a denim jacket. Um, I saw Samantha, Sam, Mayer, um, that she looked pretty stable, uh, looked like she was shot in the knee. So when I saw it, it looked like she was shot in the knee, I, said, I figured she was pretty stable, she's all right. I noticed Carmen beside Ben. Yes. I, I noticed Carmen beside Ben, of, and um, I went close to just kind of bet, get a better gauge and um, She wasn't moving, and she was just laying there. Okay. Just was laying there still, and there was no response. She just wasn't, she was just moving. Uh, she wasn't, excuse me, she wasn't moving, and um, she was just laying there still, no response, face down, her head to the side, and hair just covered her face, and I knew that she was probably gone, and then um, I went over to Maddie and uh, I took a look at her and it was hard to tell where exactly she was shot. I knew she had multiple gunshots, but I couldn't tell exactly where, but I, I, I wasn't clear as to where, so because I wasn't clear as to where the, sh the shots 
hit her, um, and I knew there were multiple ones, I was afraid to really move her because of the position that she was in. She was propped. Um, she, was, she was kind of propped up between the outside of my desk and the podium. The podium was somewhat close to my desk and the outside of my desk. So she was kind of propped up in that position, so right? Did you recognize that? That is, is this photograph truly and actually depicted? That is correct. That's exactly it. Is that the way she was positioned? And who was that? That's Madeline Wilford. And that's the position you were just describing? Correct. And I couldn't tell where she was shot, so I left her like that because I was afraid if I moved her, it may, it may have made it worse if I flattened her. Okay. So Runner, like that was it. Exhibit, uh, four. Four. F. F. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. For identification will be received as state 63 in evidence. Thank you, ma'am. Now I'm going to show you, um, Ms. Reoban, state's exhibit 63, the photograph you just identified. That's the position you described that Mad Madeline Wilford in? That's correct. Okay. And um, was Danielle Gilbert in your classroom? Yes, she was. Okay. And had you ever had an opportunity to watch her cell phone videos? I have. And is that you in it? That is. That was you, right? Going to the door? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, did the police come? How, how soon after? Well, it seemed like forever, but uh, I guess maybe 30, 40 minutes later, okay. they yeah. arrived. Um, after I did what I could with the, the, the injured. Look, can I interrupt you for one second? You saw uh, uh, the, the video, Daniel Gilbert's video, right? Was, was that accurate as to when the police came? Because the police came, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, yes. So whatever that video shows, is that how quickly the police came? Correctly? Yes. Whatever okay. time was on, yes. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So when the police came, what did they do? Uh, so when the police, I we heard the police arrive at the building, and... Uh, um, you could hear them start going through the hallways and calling all kinds of code numbers and whatnot, going through the classrooms. And I went over to the, the door um, and tried to get their attention as soon as I could get them to our classroom because we were hit. And uh, I went over to the, the broken glass uh, in the window or the broken window and just tried to get their attention with me, you know, 
calling for help, you know, pss, pss, help, help, come here, come here. And um, moments later they came and, uh, you know, opened the door for them and they hurried in and they started to, um, you know, shout, how many down? Who's down? How many down? And how many injured? And the kids just shouted out answers. And, of course, then they saw and they started to uh, take out the injured students first. Okay. And let me show you State Exhibit 4B for identification and ask you, who is this? That's Carmen Shentrup. I'd like to offer uh, 4B, Your Honor. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. Without objection, State Exhibit 4B for identification will be received as State 64. I have no further questions of Ms. Reoven, Your Honor. Just uh, permission to uh, publish once you leave the Senate. Friends, any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're excused. Thank State, when you're ready, you can call your next witness. Samantha Mayor. Good morning. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. You can go ahead and have a seat. And if you would please lean into the microphone when you're speaking and state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Samantha Mayer, M A Y O R. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning, Ms. Mayor. How are you? I'm okay. How okay. are you? I'm good. So, do you go to school? Yes. Where do you go to school? I go to Indiana University. Okay. And what year are you in? I'm going into my senior year. And where did, where did you go to high school? Marjorie Selman Douglas. And when did you graduate? Well, everybody knows when they graduate. <laughs> uh, 2019. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'd like to call your attention to February the 14th, 2018. You remember that day? Yes. Okay. I want to call your attention uh, specifically uh, to fourth period. Where were you? Miss Reoven's classroom. Okay. And that was, do you remember what classroom that was? I believe it was 1214. Okay. The lady who just left, that was your teacher, Miss Reoven? Yes. Okay. All right. Would 1213 be more accurate? Yes. Okay. All right, so tell us what happened during fourth period. I was in my fourth period classroom, and I was, we were learning some sort of psychology um, lesson, and 
I was sitting in my desk, which was about the middle of the room, and during the middle of the lesson, we started to hear gunshots. Okay. And I didn't really know what was happening. I didn't know where they were coming from or anything. Um, and everyone kind of looked around and then, like, started, like, got out of their seats and started going to the corner of the classroom that was on the door, um, away from the windows. And um, we were all sitting on the floor, and I was about, I wasn't on the side with the door. I was on the ball that, that touched both the window and the door ball. And um, we heard gunshots, and then the guns, the gunshots started going into our classroom. And I remember closing my eyes and not looking and not still not knowing what was going on. And then they stopped, and my classmates started screaming and moaning, the ones who were hurt. And then I realized um, that I couldn't really move my leg, and I didn't know why um, Ben was kind of falling on me, so I couldn't tell if that was why it was hurting. And then... Um, Is that ben Wick, Benjamin Wickander? Yes. Falling? Okay. And... I knew that he was in a lot of pain, and I asked someone next to me why my knee was hurting. I couldn't really tell, and then they let me know that I had been shot in the knee. And then I heard someone on the phone with um, 911, and they then said that I had also been shot. And I remember Miss Reoven taking clothes or anything that she could find and coming over and helping to wrap people's wounds. And then I remember someone knocking on the door and trying to get into the door. And that's when I started saying, don't open it. Like, don't, because I couldn't see anything. Right. Um, so I was saying, don't open it. I was terrified for who was going to be let in. And then it was police officers who were letting us out and I got lifted up or at first I didn't really understand why they were helping me still. I, I was very, very upset that they weren't helping someone next to me and did you did you get carried out? Yeah, I got carried out. Yeah. Okay, um, did, where, did, where did, did you go to the hospital because of your knee? Yeah, I went to the hospital and I went in an, obviously an ambulance to get there. Okay, and uh, what was wrong with your knee? I mean, I know you got shot, but w what happened to you? I believe that it shattered my kneecap. Okay, and did you have surgery? Yes. And do you have any after effects from that? Yeah. What are some of the things? Um, well, sometimes I overcompensate on one side because I'm still nervous because my left side was injured, so I kind of overcompensate with my right side. Sometimes I feel a lot of pain in it, a lot of soreness. And sometimes when I work out too much or do things that I used to do just fine, it hurts. Okay. Let me show you uh, State's Exhibit uh, 4D. And do you recognize who's in that photo? Who is yes, that? Yes, that's me. And does that show uh, where your injury to your knee was? Yes. Okay. Is this accurate? Truly and accurately depict the injury to your knee that happened on February the 14th, 2018? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to offer this, please. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. Okay, without objection, states exhibit, thank you, 4D for identification will be received as states 65.
Yeah, uh, Your Honor, thank you. I have no further questions of okay. uh, Ms. Mayor. No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. You're excused. Next witness? Sure. Madeline Wilford? <clears throat> Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and sit down and put your hand down. Put your hand down and please sit down. And if you would please lean into the microphone when you're speaking and state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Madeline Wilford, W-I-L-F-O-R-D. Good morning, Ms. Wilford. How are you? Good. Good. Are you going to school? I am. Where do you go to school? Southern Utah University. I'll be a junior this upcoming year. Okay. Uh, where did you go to high school? Stoneman Douglas. And did you graduate from Stoneman Douglas? Yes. What year did you graduate? 2019. Okay. I'd like to call your attention to February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that day? Yes. Uh, I'd like to call your attention specifically to the fourth period of that day. Were you in school? Yes. And where were you? during fourth period? I was in AP Psychology. With Ms. Reoven? Correct. And was that classroom 1213? Yes. Okay, could you tell us what happened? Um, we were just going about class like normal and we heard shots. Um, it took us a second to realize what was happening, but when they were fired off again is when we started to move and um, hide. I was stuck between the teacher's desk and her podium and then I was just hiding until I felt myself get hit. Um, I didn't know how many times. I just, I just knew I was hit and I tried looking behind me to see if anyone could help me but all I saw was blood on the floor. So I just kind of turned around and um, when the fire alarm went off, I also thought that hopefully, like, they knew what was going on and so that they were coming soon, but um, I ended up passing out. Okay. And then... What's the next thing you remember after you passed out? I was in and out of consciousness until I fully woke up that Thursday night, Friday morning. Okay. So. And so, do you know what happened to you? Yes. What happened to you? I was shot four times in my right arm, my right lung, some of my ribs on my right side, and I had surgery on my abdomen. Okay. And how many surgeries have you had? Three. Three. Uh, are there any after effects from your surgeries? Um, thankfully, I had a great orthopedic surgeon, so I'm able to use my hand, but I still do have trouble breathing with my lung. And uh, you, you you passed out. You remember how you got out of the classroom? Is that correct? I briefly remember hearing the responders, but I mean, I didn't really like. And I remember being in the ambulance, but I don't remember much. Okay, okay. 
Thank you, Ms. Wilford. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Mr. Epstein. Logan Mitchell. Good afternoon. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you, sir. You can go ahead and be seated. Please uh, speak into the microphone and state your full name and spell your last name. Um, Logan Mitchell, M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L. -L. Good morning. I guess it's good afternoon, Mr. Mitchell. Do you go to school? I do. Where do you go to school? Florida State University. And what year are you in? I will be a senior. Where did you go to high school? Uh, Stoneman Douglas. And when did you graduate? 2019. I'd like to call your attention to uh, Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that day? I do, yes. I'd like to call your attention specifically to the fourth period. Were you in school on that day? I was. And where were you during fourth period? I was in um, AP Psychology. Okay, and that's Ms. Riova's classroom, 1213? Yes. yes. Okay, could you please tell us what occurred on that day? Um, it was a pretty normal day. Uh, for the majority of the day, there was, um, I'm showing on, there was a fire dr drill earlier in the day, and then at fourth period, um, around 2.20, we started hearing very loud noises coming from somewhere in the hallway. When you say there was a fire drill, you mean... Earlier in the day. Yeah, several periods earlier. It was second period. Okay. All right. So there were two fire drills that day? Yes. Two, I mean, two fire alarms? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, we heard very loud noises coming from somewhere in the hallway. And then Ms. Reoven told everyone to get up and move. Um, a bunch of students initially went to the wrong side of the classroom towards the windows uh, away from the hallway and the door. But she was able to signal for everyone to return back. Um, to the point where uh, they couldn't be seen from the doorway, with the majority of the students being behind the desk. Um, and then we uh, waited there, and then the glass shattered, um, uh, and, uh, some, uh, as bullets were shot into the room, uh, and uh, several students were hit. And um, after uh, bullets were shot into our room, Ms. Rayoven uh, got up to check uh, on the door to make sure it was locked and then check on Ben, one of the students in the room who was hit. Was that Benjamin Wickander? Yes. Um, and then um, someone behind the desk uh, told me to uh, give me a jacket and asked if I could uh, bandage Maddie because she had stopped um, making noise. Um, and that was Madeline Lilford? Yes. Um, so I, I went to where she had uh, fallen in front of the desk, and I uh, wrapped the jacket around her arm and then held another piece of it against her abdomen and waited there until the cops showed up and pulled okay. us out of the room. All right. Um, did, did you see anyone else wounded? That yes. So uh, there was Carmen, Carmen Shantrup, um, who was, uh, she wasn't moving. She was just face down. And then there was um, Sam Mayer as well. Okay. okay. Um, let me show you. Did you take any kind of videos with your phone, cell phone? I did, yes. Okay, let me show you space exhibit Mark 4G for identification and ask you if you can identify this, this drive. Yes, this is the flash drive from okay. there. And you've watched it? I have, yes. And does it accurately and truly depict the phone video that you took on February the 14th, 2018? Yes, sir. 
Your Honor, I'd like to uh, play this uh, video. Is there any objection to the admission of this video? Yes, ma'am. Okay. G as in George for identification will be admitted as states 66. Your Honor, I don't have any further questions of Mr. Mitchell. If there's no cross-examination, we can play it while he's... Okay, thank you, sir. You're excused. Thank you, ladies.
Thank you. And that's uh, for this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to recess for lunch. We're going to follow the same procedure that we did yesterday. I would ask that you please be back at 1.45 uh, and meet the Sheriff's Office in the same way that you've done all the other days uh, this week. Again, uh, 1.45, it's 12.15 now, 12.17 now, so that gives you an hour and a half. Uh, I hope that's enough to get in and out of security uh, and all the way up to the 17th floor. If it isn't, the sheriff's office will let me know and we'll adjust the time again tomorrow until we, we get, or not tomorrow, but Friday, until we get it down to, uh, to the sufficient amount of time for you all. Please remember, do not discuss the case. Do not begin deliberating. Do not have any discussions of any sort about the facts of the case, about what's gone on in the courtroom while you are uh, on recess. Other than that, I hope you enjoy your lunch, and I'll see you at 1.45. Thank you. Only be seated for the lawyer's information. Uh, I asked the jury to be back at 1.45 because in order to gather all 22 people and get them from point A to point B through two uh, different screenings, security screenings, um, we're going to try to start at 2 o'clock. I've asked them to be back 15 minutes early so that we can get them through everything they need to get through. So if you all can be ready to start back at 2, that would be great. And other than that, we're in recess. Thank you. <laughs>